Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Just a brief reminder, there will not be a live show tonight, but Disco Dingo has been released, and so we are going to do a walkthrough of that new version of Ubuntu. And uh, there's a lot of neat things inside this version. Uh, it definitely has a lot more functions and features uh, that are new, and so we're going to walk through what some of those guys happen to be. So without any further ado, we're just going to go ahead and jump on over. Now, uh, before we dive into all of this, the installation is much the same. Uh, this is the minimal install running the basic version, which is running on GNOME. Of course, it's a modified GNOME, and uh, they give you the the abilities to you know encrypt the volume. Really, nothing else. Um, nothing else surprising is in the setup. So if you've set up an Ubuntu before, then you won't be seeing anything new. If you've never set it up before, it's very easy. Definitely uh, give it a try. But what we're going to do is we're going to jump on over here and uh, just look at some of the basic system setup. Now, I threw a document up on the desktop, and uh, I did that for a very good reason that we will talk about in a little bit. But before we get started, um, our icons are a little bit different in some of the places, um, new modern type icons. Now, there are some changes inside of the settings panel, so that's kind of where we're going to go first. First, to look at our details, uh, we are on uh, GNOME 3.32, which I had a chance to look at recently with the Fedora 30 beta, which is very good. Um, and the Linux kernel should be uh, 5.50. I'm not actually seeing it there. You, it used, they used to be able to at least see the Linux kernel in there, I thought anyway. But let's just go ahead and do uname r. So we are 5.0.0-13 generic. So that is our kernel version. So everything here looks uh, pretty good. Now, some of the other things that are inside your panel. Um, inside the privacy, I think this has always been here, although some things are highlighting it as potentially something new. Um, location services, I think what they're doing is trying to integrate this closer in. Like I said, this seems to be, like I've always seen location services there. I've highlighted it numerous times. That is showing up in some news releases as something new. I don't know why. But what is new is they have an entire panel here just for applications, kind of like the, you will find in an iOS or an Android device, where you can go down to any, indi uh, any individual application, you can show notifications, and in this case here, these are default handlers. So uh, this will kind of determine um, what things are seen. Uh, there is a slight danger with some of these things. If you unset something like this and Firefox doesn't work HTM files and you're like, I don't, can't understand why something's not loading right. <laughs> Little danger zone, uh, but it definitely is a neat function that you can definitely unset stuff. If you do not want WebM files to play in Firefox for a good reason, you can unset it. That is actually a very good thing. Uh, so this is actually uh, a neat function that every one of these you can um, do your, here's like notification, here's uh, search. So your integration will tell you if it does something related to the system. So I can disable searchability from the files inside of that. Um, you can flip through all the different applications that they have. Now, LivePatch is a new application here, um, as far as I know. And uh, I think let's go ahead and look at that one now. So... Um, <clears throat> let's do, let's just go into our uh, software and updates. So this is the application that contains your drivers and things. So your basic uh, repositories, other software, this tells you your updates. Are you getting anything? This is all, all old, all the original things. This is of course, if you are um, looking for new drivers, you want to search for your drivers in here, install anything it has. Developer options, this has always been on here, allows you to go into developer modes. Live patch is a new function. So live patch will allow the system to automatically download and install any security updates that do not require a restart. This is disabled by default. I love this option. This is a great job. Especially I like the fact that it's it disabled by default because we can actually get in there and enable this if we want to. Um, in fact, right now it says it's not available. Um, <clears throat> But it's going. To, it's a new application, um, so hopefully this gets turned on very soon. I'm guessing it'll come on on a um, on a uh, on an update soon. So this though is a new functionality, and it will be enabled to install security updates as you go through the system. Um, so there's notifications uh, for that. Here's your software updater. 
Um, nothing else uh, super surprising here. Of course, you can disable search um, in Ubuntu software or our notification. So that tab is new. Uh, the sound system does have a little bit more functionality into it, which I believe we can also get to. Um, I thought we could get to it up here as well. I guess not. Uh, but inside of our sound settings, uh, we do have um, system sounds. We can enable, disable system sounds here. Um, output devices. There's just some some change in some functionality that we have. So there we go. There's uh, alert sounds over there. Just makes it basically makes the thing system look a little bit a little bit more modern, a little bit more um, maybe a little bit more user friendly. I didn't see anything else inside of here that that seemed new to me. Here we can adjust our dock size. Uh, this might be new. I can't remember if this has been here or not. Um, so there's that. Now, as far as our desktop, let's get get onto our desktop for a second because um, GNOME, of course, removes your desktop icons, which for me is the biggest reason I do not like using GNOME these days. Um, Ubuntu does a great thing in restoring that functionality. It is still only a partial restoration. If I right click on my desktop, I can create a new folder, but I cannot create new documents directly on the desktop. So I'd have to actually go into my file manager and I can create new desk uh, documents there. So I could go here into the folder in Nautilus and create a new document. Now I added this uh, to our um, templates directory is what I did. So. I added that to the templates directory. Now, another cool feature of the new Nautilus is we have starred applications. So the starred applications are, um, you can base basically a, a favorite feature, right click the document and there's an unstar just above property. So star if it's already starred, unstar if it's not. So you can toggle the star on or off like that. So you can favorite different applications. You can just go here and you'll get a list of these without having to drill down to different folders. Amazing new feature like that. That's very cool. Um, other things that we have, um, we already talked about permission controls, some of the things in GNOME. Um, <clears throat> Going to look through some of quick release notes real quick. I really didn't notice a lot of other things in there out of the way. Of course, we are still on Xorg by default. If you uh, log out of the system, you can still select to log into the system under Wayland. Um, so that's definitely an option. Just click on this. We have our gear. We can go. This is the Ubuntu default, which is Xorg. We have Ubuntu Wayland. <clears throat> I always uh, use the default X instead of Wayland uh, unless there's a, a real good reason I, I need to. So inside of our software store, um, nothing else uh, too surprising in here. Um, there's no updates to do. Here's what's already installed. Here is, um, you know, we can go ahead and search for applications over here. Well, maybe my uh, search function does not seem to be working right now. Not sure what's up with that, but all right. Uh, let's also have a look at what's installed on the default. So this is just the default minimal install. Let's go ahead and boot up Live Patch. So yeah, again, it's not available on the system. I just want to go ahead and, and uh, double check that from the system settings again. That is a neat feature that um, that I'll be looking forward to looking at in the future. Is there updater, uh, basic system monitor, system resources? Now, system resources is probably going to be slightly higher than it, things if you're running like a, an XSCE or a Mate or something. One gig though is very respectable. Um, what I did find though is that it didn't matter what the system resources are. Um, I find that Cinnamon is very snappy for me despite having higher system resources. And I find this on GNOME 3.32 to be a very fast, very snappy system. And you can see how fast it's responding. And this is inside of a virtual box. Um, and it's uh, not really encountering any, any serious issues. Um, up-to-date software, very up-to-date kernel, um, definitely the, an easier GNOME that I'm used to. Uh, I love the fact that we have our desktop icons there. I, I don't like that I can't create a document directly on the desktop, but hey, at least they did a good job of giving us, uh, giving us a, a better update to Nautilus. Um, so 
Icons, of course, they've been talking about the icons are new. They're, you know, for me, icons are our icons for the most part. They do look good, though. Uh, they're not uh, not too bad, not too shabby. Overall, I think that uh, this does look like it's going to be a very good release. And uh, I'll be curious to see what happens with this, uh, with the live patch and to see how this is. And I, th I might do a couple of extra videos on this. Um, I did want to look around at the GNOME documents, see if that works on this one as well, and just see some of the other, other functions. So there is a Disco Dingo, Ubuntu 1904 with most of the features highlighted. Let me know what you think. Is this something you're going to be looking into or not? Uh, let me know in the comments down below. You can help support the channel by having a look at the links up above me or in the description down below and follow along on the social media for updates.